We just bought an airplane for $16,000. Yes, you hear that correctly. This video is not clickbait. This isn't some RC plane. This isn't a crash plane for parts. This is a complete factory built plane from 2006 that, well, it's been abandoned and sitting for eight years. But have no fear, by the end of this video, I think, fingers crossed, if everything goes well, we can have this plane running for the first time and potentially even get it to an airworthy state where it can take flight for the first time since 2015. Buckle up, grab some popcorn, grab a drink. This video is going to be a long one, fair warning, but it will be worth it. Do not skip ahead, sit back and relax. It should make for an awesome, awesome budget airplane rebuild series. So without further ado, let's get into it. Introducing to the channel, our new 2006 AMD HD 601 XL SLSA. Roll the clip. Well, there you guys have it. Another plane is joining the collection, albeit a very, very cheap plane. I cannot believe I'm saying that. We bought an airplane for $16,000. It isn't even an experimental airplane. This is a factory built certified LSA aircraft. This isn't some corroded, dilapidated 80 year old airplane that's hanging on by a thread. This plane is just 17 years old, newer than our Cirrus, the newest airplane we've ever bought and by far the cheapest, the price of like a used Honda Civic for an airplane. But as you can probably guess by now, it's not all sunshine and rainbows with this plane. Like I said, it's been sitting for eight years. I'll explain more of the whole story, how we bought the plane, why it's been sitting here in just a minute. But moral of the story is there's a lot this plane needs. But hey, that's where the really good content comes in. That's where a lot of fun is going to happen. And thank goodness we have our good friend Larry here to help. Larry is an expert on these planes and he'll be a huge asset getting it going again, turning some wrenches and educating us on our new purchase. So they'll be rolling up in just a minute. Christian and Larry drove out from Arizona with the truck and trailer just in case we have to trailer it out of here. But we'll know after we start to go through the plane and see what we have here, see how bad it is after sitting for eight years. I haven't really walked around it at all yet. I've been saving our first impressions for when Larry and Christian get here, but they just texted. They'll be here in five minutes. So without further ado, let's walk around our new plane, talk with Larry and see what we got ourselves into. And just like that, the cavalry is here with the Ford Lightning. They were a little delayed because uh, as you'd expect, they had to charge a few times. I forgot to account for that. Larry, nice to have you on the vlog. Thank you so much much for coming out. You've already been a huge asset with this plane and you haven't even seen it. So let's go take a look at it. Oh my. We grab some tools out because I know there's no battery in it. So we could hook up a jump pack and at least check out the avionics real quick. Yes, that's true. It's completely dead. I got tools, got everything we could need to possibly get this thing started and running again. We'll see. Again, we got to look into it, see how good or bad it is. I didn't mention yet, but you have one of these planes, kind of. It's not exactly like this, but no, it's I'm, basically the same. It's basically the same. I've actually got an older model of this plane and I'm building another older model of this plane. Oh my goodness. So what year is yours from? I built it in 2017, but the okay. kit was from 1999. 1999. Okay, so similar era, similar except era. yours is experimental technically okay, and ours I, is LSA. Correct. Yours is a certified light sport or special light sport. Mine is ELSA. Okay, so you can put whatever engine in there. You can do a lot yeah. more. You have a lot more freedom to do I what you a want. a whole lot more freedom. Okay, but this has some extra value because it's certified right. and it's like you guys have a continental motor on yours mine's got a chevy corvair motor on mine ha very cool the whole experimental world is so fascinating larry's been trying to get us into something small efficient and a little fun to sport around in and he's so happy when we called him up saying that we bought this thing first impressions uh it, first it's impression, a little dirty it's dirty but yeah you got the continental 200 like i said we haven't spun it yet but we do have play so i've 
fairly certain that none of the cylinders are locked up. Yeah. What's this? Sen? I've never heard of this Sen brand. Sen this is the same brand prop I've got on mine. Oh, okay. They're one of the oldest prop makers out there. So really? I noticed awesome. it's it's wood. I'm so right? Wood? It's a, it's a wood composite, actually. Yeah. This is the first time the vlog is seeing the plane, guys. So what do you think? Comment down below, of course, if you know these planes, if you know LSAs or the Zodiacs in particular, be sure to drop your knowledge down below. Yeah, so there's some other cool things about this since this has been in California. Yeah. One of the beauties about the Zenith line, because yeah, this is originally produced by AMD, but it was under license from Zenith Aircraft Company. Right, in Canada. In Canada, and then they also have a Zenith North America, which is in Mexico, Missouri. Oh, okay. So two different companies. The cool thing about the way they construct their planes is most aircraft are produced using 2024 aluminum. Yeah. These guys use 6061T6, which I know there's a bunch of numbers. 6061T6 is corrosion resistant aluminum. This is why Larry's here. The fact that he knows the different types of aluminums used between the different yeah. kits. Very low probability that there's any corrosion anywhere in the airframe. Oh, thank that's, goodness. That's, and with it being aluminum, it's super lightweight. You're saying 700 and something pounds be, empty? Uh, mine, uh, again, mine's a tail dragger. This has got a little bit heavier gear, different paint, interior. So all things together, my plane empty weight is 745 pounds. Oh my gosh. So this one might be 800 or uh, somewhere I, plus I or minus. Were, it, looking at it, this is probably in the neighborhood about 780-ish. 780. Guys, this plane is so light. Yeah, Larry said he's got a little trick for moving it around. And you lean on. Oh my gosh, the whole nose lifts. So you can rotate it easily and push it around. That's how light this plane is, guys. So I'm six foot six, and on paper that might sound like that wouldn't work, but you guys saw in the intro, I fit just fine. It's amazing yeah. the, the comfort you have in such a small cabin. Everybody I've talked to is like, I don't know how I'm gonna like that. Then they sit in, like like sitting in a lazy boy. I'm sure you're wondering how many hours are on the plane. Um, I'll explain that in a bit, but uh, we don't exactly know. This was sold at auction with no paperwork, no log books, and unknown hours on the airframe and engine. That's usually a massive red flag. Don't ever buy a plane without log books and here we are doing just that, but again, I can explain. I'll tell you about the deal and why this, I think, was a smoking deal. All right, first things first, let's get the cowling off to inspect this engine, see if there's any hope of this thing running again. Oh, the uh, the big question mark you had. There's two things on here. One is the fuel lines. Okay, fuel lines. And then uh, condition of the nose wheel. So the nose wheel on this one actually uses a bungee cord for suspension. Bungee cord for suspension. Yes. Oh, that sounds legit. Now, Another big question mark that we had was uh, what fuel was left in it because if there was mo gas for eight years of sitting, that would be a very bad thing. So let's give it a sniff and see what we're working with here. Oh boy. Uh, I think that's 100 low lead. That is 100 low lead. Heck yeah. Okay, guys, that's that's great news because if there was car gas, like 87 octane, in this plane for eight years, the fuel lines would look terrible. It would just cause so many problems further downstream of the fuel tank. But now, with it being 100 low lead, this, this fuel lasts a really, really long time. So obviously, we're probably gonna wanna drain this. It didn't look like much was in there at all. Check yeah, the, we'll other. the other. One. We're getting to work so quickly and not wasting any time because uh, if we're trying to do something with this plane today, we gotta beat the sunset, which is right there. So we don't have a whole lot of time. So sorry if it's a little fast paced, but we're going right into it. We're not wasting any time. Okay, let's check this one. Uh, okay, there's some in here. Probably about six gallons. Six gallons? <laughs> of course Larry knows, six gallons. I have no idea, it's just. Ah, there you guys go, boom. 80, 87 minimum octane? Oh, 15 gallons, so 30, 30, 30 total. These came stocked with 12 gallon tanks, so you've got the long range tanks on here. Oh, long range tanks. And are these the are wing these. lockers? Yeah. Okay, that was also an option. This plane's gonna burn about five and a half gallons an hour with the O200. Wow. It'll go about 105 nautical miles an hour. Wow, so that's pretty good. 30 gallons, you need to put an hour reserve, so make it 25 gallons. Almost five hours of flying, so that's over 500 nautical miles. Yeah. It's pretty good for an LSA. Whoa, there we go. There we go. Okay, that is also dirty. What well, duh. Yikes. And yeah, we got a little bit of bird right over here. Oh. Bird. Okay. Someone made a nice little five star hotel in here. Wow, I've seen some dirty engine bays with our car auction buys, but I don't know if I've 
So here's seen a, this dirty. Here's that bungee cord I was telling you about right there. Oh, it's literally a bungee cord for yeah. the landing gear. Yeah. There's the old battery, PC680, sure enough. Dirty engine, plain. babe, but you gotta admit, there's a difference between dusty and oily. It yeah. looks dry. Yeah, That's it actually start. Well. It actually looks decent. Oh, here's the serial number. Year on here? I guess not. This engine was, of course, factory new in 2006 when this plane was made. So I did find the previous for sale listing, which was maybe in 2015, just before this plane stopped flying, and it had 500 and something hours on it. So that's pretty low time. 500 hours on the engine. Maybe now, when it was parked, it had like maybe 575 or 600. We'll know hopefully when we turn on the avionics. Hopefully, there's a little Hobbs hour tack time in there. Oh my gosh. The first time power is going to this plane in eight years. While he's doing that, so take a look guys, it says unleaded automotive gasoline, 87 minimum octane. That is so cool, the fact that you can put MoGas in this plane. So not only does it not burn a lot of fuel, but the fuel that you can use is MoGas, which is a lot cheaper than typical 100 low lead. We've got power. Oh, will the Dynon flip on? Come on, come on. It's thinking about it. It's It wants to so bad. Transponder. Transponder. This feels so cool bringing this plane back to life. Hopefully, by the end of this series, this thing will be fully restored, flying, upgraded, and as if it was never in hibernation for eight years. So subscribe now so you don't miss any of that. You know, one thing we gotta try here. Ready? Nav lights. Yep. Red strobes. Yep. Wow. Strobes are working. All the lights work. Our next question: boost pump. That's your fuel pump. And I went through all the stuff in the back looking for the logs, no luck there, but we do have the wheel pants and uh, extra thing of oil, and we just hooked up the bigger jumper pack and check it out. The Dynon's the back to life. Wow, so everything came back to life. So let's take a look here. I really hope there's Hobbs in here somewhere. Maybe more? Wow, this thing's pretty nifty. Oh, it's showing four gallons and three gallons. Yeah, I don't think there's much in it. Well, might be right. Okay. Box, mm, there we go. Oh, oh, tack time, yes! 564! Barely gone up. So after the dude bought it for a good sum of money, I'll say, it was like parked basically six months after that. One more thing we want to test while we're right okay. here. Okay. Flaps. And they're running. Wow. Okay, and your Everything flaps. works. Everything works. That's part of the crazy story, guys. This plane was not parked because of some mechanical issue or because something broke or anything catastrophic. It was simply parked because the previous owner of this plane was a student pilot and his CFI passed away and I guess he couldn't find a replacement teacher or lost interest in flying and simply parked the plane and abandoned it. More on the story in a second. All right, next thing before we go for a potential first startup, we gotta sump the fuel, which... Oh dang, this one's like empty, empty. Certainly not blue. Yikes. That doesn't look good. It's got oh, some crud in it some, too. There's some crud. Let's take a look. Now it's getting there blue. Go. No, that's a little bit of water in there. So right oh, there, yeah. So when you guys talk about sumping your fuel tank, see how there's that, what's called a uh, phase separation? Mm. We can see that. That's water. All right, sump some more. Well, that's what happens after a plane sits for eight years. I guess not a ton of water, but still, that's night and day. Let's see how the other one's doing. Better. It's like no water in that one. That is a automotive fuel pump from Facet. Oh, man, automotive pump, automotive plugs. We're gonna try to bore scope it, see what the inside of the cylinders look like. Christian's sumping the fuel. And then if all goes well, we might try a first start here. This is absolutely crazy. That's nice and smooth coming out. All right, let's see what we got. That's only oxidation, it's not it. Looks like a lot of lead on the deposit on the, yeah. on the piston. Coming up. Feel pressure. Feel on. Up on top. Oh, it's a nice looking plug right there. Yeah, look at that. Okay, so while they're bore scoping the other three cylinders, let me quickly tell you the story of this plane. I'll give you the abridged version because this is a long, long story. But basically, I was about to take a nap about a week ago, laying in my bed, and somebody messages me on Facebook Marketplace saying, hey, I'm interested in your Porsche Boxer you have listed. Can I come check it out? So I quickly reply to that, and I'm about to put my phone down, and it takes me back to my Facebook feed where I see a post saying, for auction, two abandoned airplanes in Southern California, top bitter winds, no reserve, and I'm like, 
Hmm, interesting. Should I be buying an abandoned airplane? No! Probably not, but does that sound awesome? Yes. So I immediately clicked on the link to find that the auction had 34 minutes to go. I got up out of bed at 100 miles an hour, ran to my computer, and quickly made an account to bid because the plane was only at like 11,000 bucks. And I'm like, oh my gosh. There was also an abandoned uh, Piper Cherokee with it, but I found out that plane had been sitting for nearly 20 years, didn't have logbooks. I wasn't as interested in that one. I wanted the LSA. So I quickly made an account. I started bidding with just like 13, 14 minutes left in the auction. I was on top at 12,000, 13,000. There were still a couple guys bidding against me. 14,000, 15,000, and then what do you know, it started to slow down. Four seconds, three seconds, two seconds, one second, boom, drops the hammer, sold, $16,000. And at that point, I started to freak out because I was like, did I just buy a paperweight that will never fly again? or was this the best $16,000 I've ever spent? But there was no going back. I wired the money and I got the paperwork for the plane. It was officially mine. So I quickly hopped online, started buying all the parts for this plane, like oil, oil filter, air filter, blank log books so we can start to recreate the logs, just any parts that we would need to get this thing flying again. So we have a truck full of parts, a bunch of tools, and that's why we're going through it now. So one week later, present day, we're with the plane, first reactions, and we're probably just moments away from trying to start this plane for the first time. And you might be saying, no logbooks, you guys are stupid. That's crazy. You don't know how much time's on the plane. You don't know if the ADs were completed or anything. Well, actually I do. Like you just saw there, 500 and whatever, 75 hours on the plane. So we now have the time on the engine, the airframe, and get this, there have only been two airworthiness directives on this plane, one of which is a big one. It was the first time LSAs or experimentals have ever been grounded and required to complete an AD if I am not mistaken. So this was like groundbreaking stuff. When they grounded the 601 fleet and forced everyone to do this wing reinforcement modification, it definitely angered a lot of owners who didn't want to go through with those modifications, but basically they required it through an AD. So everyone had to do it. I think this was post 2009 maybe 2010, any plane flying past that date had to have this wing modification done. So I'm like, oh shoot, because I got word from the auction and the other bidders that they were like, hey, like, you know, without the log books, you can't prove that this AD was done. You need to, you need to do it. If you don't have proof it was done, it's not airworthy to fly, which is true. That's why buying planes with no log books is a terrible idea because you have no proof the ADs were done and you have to redo them all to prove that they were complied with, right? Makes sense? Thanks to Larry, we have a huge breakthrough with this plane. I said, Larry, I do not wanna to have to drop tens of thousands of dollars doing this airworthiness directive, reinforcing the wing. Like, how do we prove that it was already done? And he goes, send me pictures of the fuselage, zoomed in on the door area. So I sent it to him. What do you know? He says, see that little T bracket right there under the door? That's part of the reinforcement modification. This plane has had it done. You do not need to do it. The wave of relief that went over me. I thought this plane would need so much money spent to tear it all apart, to either do the AD or prove that it had been done. And here all along, you could tell from the exterior just by a few rivets and a little T bracket on the fuselage. So with that AD done, all we have to prove is that the other AD is done. That's just a quick visual inspection to make sure no cracks on like the elevator. I'm sure that AD won't be a problem. That's it. From there, we just start to recreate the logs and you start a new engine logbook, a new airframe logbook, and a new propeller logbook, and that's it. So sure, it loses some value not having the past 500 hours worth of logs, but it's only 500 hours. The plane's from 2006. It's not a huge deal. And for 16 grand. So there you go. There's the story of buying it last week, impulse purchase with no logbooks and overcoming all of those challenges. Also, there's no POH in the plane, so it's not airworthy without it. So we also have to recreate the POH by doing a new weight and balance and you know filling that out so that we're 100% airworthy once a conditional inspection is done. Yes, you do not need to do an annual, it's an LSA. All you need is a conditional inspection, which any AMP can sign off on. You don't need to be an IA. So there's definitely some perks to it being an LSA over you know some standard normal plane. So. There you guys go, you're caught up to speed. I hope you're enjoying this video so far. Okay, I need to get back out there. They're wrenching on the plane and I think draining some more fuel, maybe to refill it with new fuel. Oh man, a first start is, I think, coming soon. Let's get to it. One thing I'm really happy about is the fact that this plane, even though it had been sitting out for eight years, it had a canopy cover over it. Thank goodness. Now, granted, it was under a T-shade, so that knocked off a lot of the sun, but still, you can clearly see the sun 
took a toll on the graphic decals here. These used to be gold and black, definitely needs to be redone. You can clearly see where the canopy cover was covering and where it was not covering. That is a wild 50-50 split. So we're gonna have to take all that off, redo it. Have no fear, it looks like crap now, but after a detail, new graphics, and a good wash and a good polish, this thing is going to look incredible. Mark my words, you guys know me, I love, love, love cleaning cars and planes. Look at that, it comes right off. Yeah, it's just, it's just dirty. I'm listening. Okay. Once it primes, you'll hear it change. Ready? Okay. Oh, no. oh yeah, that battery is dead dead. You know you need one. That's awesome. Clear prop. We're gonna try to get started on removing the wings. So you're saying it's super easy? Super easy. So basically, yes, we could maybe get a conditional inspection done here at this small little airport in California, but we don't know the mechanics here. It wouldn't enable us to get good content because we live in Arizona, not here. So we would miss out on so much of the cool work getting this thing flying again that we really wanna do it at Larry's home airport, which is Yuma, Arizona. So. He says, you know what, it's so easy to take off the wings. Let's just haul it on out of here, not risk something breaking. Instead, go through it right, do it right. We gotta drop the flaps down. There's a bolt right here we gotta get, a bolt here, and then there are six bolts up here. We're probably just gonna try to go for a first start when we get to Yuma and run it with fresh, good fuel and uh, not damage anything. So stay tuned for that, it's gonna be in this video. Let's get these wings off. We got about 30, 45 minutes of sunlight left. This is, this is gonna be cutting it close. <laughs> That's easy. Easiest seat removal we've ever done. <laughs> yep. All right, so behind these access panels are... So right there, that's all that's there. So we got that, and then on the front edge here, we have the fuel lines. And then a plug for the lights? Yep, should be a plug for the lights. Jeez, that's easy. Yeah. What about these, uh, the, the All we have rigging? to do there is, if you look, I don't know if you see here, there's a little safety wire right yep. here. Uh -huh. We snip that. It's got to be one of the easiest planes to yeah. pull apart. That's your pedostatic lines, so these just disconnect. Then wow. You your, then you have the four bolts. One, two, three, four, five, six. Crazy to think, in this little bag of tools, we have everything we need to take off wings from an airplane. Crazy. Cue a cinematic edit of the fastest wing removal you will probably ever see on this YouTube channel. Roll it. The last one. You know what's crazy is uh, this plane, we've got six spar bolts. Cessna 172 has two. What? No big roadblocks. This has all been surprisingly smooth. And no corrosion either. You know, yeah, no that aluminum. Anywhere. You weren't kidding. It's in really, really good shape. All right, Christian went to Walmart, grabbed some last things we need, and then we're going to get the wings off. Larry's going to go to the end of them. You said and jiggle them around for me to get these bolts off or something. Yeah. Light at the end of the tunnel. Speaking of light, we completely ran out of light. <laughs> we're relying on iPhone flashlights and the Ford Lightning, and I am holding up the wing so it doesn't fall down because all the bolts are gone. So nothing supporting it but we're we're seeing this one through we're persevering we're freezing cold got really cold when the sun set but we're getting a workout and all three of us haven't eaten today so we are starving doing it for youtube doing it for you guys this is great content we're having a lot of fun and uh, we're gonna get this thing back to yuma get a first start and uh hear it run for the first time is the goal for tomorrow which will still be in this video so keep on watching grab that popcorn refill that drink let's go Huge shout out to those guys helping out, getting the last bolts off the spar. We did it. Two wings off the plane. <sighs> Hooray. Just putting all of our stuff away and then we'll load up the plane first and then slide the two wings under the fuselage, strap it all down and hit, this, hit the road. 
Well guys, we have a new problem. We went to push it on, and what do you know? Our trailer is not wide enough. I mean, are you kidding me? Look at the tire there. Needs more room. Look at the tire here. Needs more room. A few inches later. All right, here we go, guys. This is crazy. We got it up on, but still too wide. So we're gonna push it more forward, and then we're gonna angle it so that the tires fit in between the trailer tracks. We ratcheted the wheels closer together, but it's still not quite enough. So that's why we gotta rotate it. A few inches later. Oh wait. Uh, we only have six inches. Okay, start to put it down. Hang on, your spinner's about to hit the front. Okay, then don't go any more forward. Okay, update guys, we need six more inches, so spinner's coming off. Boom, and just like that, she's on. Ha, <laughs> just like that, yeah, right. That took many, many hours of finagling and careful balancing to get this thing up and on the trailer without hitting the prop, without hitting the gear, without hitting the trailer. Nothing got scratched or damaged. That did take a lot of time and effort though, but it's on, we're gonna strap it down. It's almost midnight. Wowie, let's hit the road. And let's catch this vlog back tomorrow morning. Okay, good morning. Just like that, we made it to the airport in Yuma, Arizona. That was a long night. Multiple charging stops, multiple times stopping to re-tighten the straps because they were getting loose. We didn't want anything to fall off the trailer. Uh, yeah, we pulled in at what, 8 a.m.? So that was, yeah, that was brutal. But we made it happen. We're here now, and we're here at Larry's hangar. No way, check it out. There's his plane that he talked about earlier in the video. All right, so under here is a Corvair engine. Oh. In case it wasn't obvious enough. Corvair powered. Look at this, so very similar, just a tail dragger. Oh, and then he's got another project in the works. Stay oh, and that. And the one at your house. Yep. Here, staying busy. Guys, you gotta check out his channel. He's got so many cool plane build videos going on and the Cessna 172. You're like us with cars, you just keep buying them. This one's a little different as far as the fit. I think you'll see what I mean, that yours fits better for you. It does feel a little tighter. The angle is more. Yeah, it's it's all in that angle right on that front edge, right. and that's because this has got a different wing on it. You know, with my legs being so long, my knees would yeah. be dangerously close to bumping these, so this would not work for me. Okay, cool. I like it. So you're starting it up. Let's do a cold oh, start. Oh. Let's hear what this Corvair Flat Six sounds. Like. He said the tires are off of a Vespa. Again, because it's experimental, you have a lot more flexibility to do what you want. Oh my goodness! Look at that. This is such a switch up on the channel. I hope you guys are liking this video so far. You guys are used to seeing Bonanza content, Cessna content, Piper content, Citation content, and now we're hitting you with the experimental light sport content. Look at that. So what's that avionics? GRT? GRT, yeah. Never heard of that. Yeah, they're uh, experimental only brand. Ah, cool. Probably a lot cheaper than oh, yeah. normal <laughs> avionics, that's for sure. Ah! Oh yeah. Wow, that sounds meaty. That is so cool with it being a six cylinder. It really has a nice sound to it. All right, so we're pulling this plane up so that we can fit the wings behind this plane. First, we're gonna wash them off, and then hopefully we're gonna, we're gonna throw a fuel line down into a bucket of gas and try to start this thing up because I know you guys have been patiently waiting for it. We gotta see if this thing will run. If it doesn't, then, you know, it's a paperweight at this point. Why invest all the money and time if, if the engine's bad? So we gotta know it's good to go before we start pouring money into it. A little treat for you guys in this video. Larry said, hey, you wanna run the Porsche down the runway? I said, heck yeah. 
for the astute viewer, you would know that this car was actually on our JR Garage channel. That's because this was one of our famous Porsche Boxster buys. We got it cheap at auction, fixed it up, cleaned it up, and then Larry said, hey, I'm actually looking for a cool little sports car. Let me buy it. So sold it to Larry and now it's in great hands. It is still looking great. I love the arena red paint job and the rare upgraded wheels from the factory. These cars, so much fun for the money. And now we're gonna see what it can do without worrying about cops and speed limits. So the perks of it being a private airport. Just make sure nobody's coming in on that I do way. not see any planes coming. Nobody's coming in that way. <laughs> I've never done this before. Heck yeah. Oh, look at us go! <laughs> That's so much fun not having to worry about cops or breaking the speed limit. Exactly. You said 3,800 feet here. Yeah, so uh, that where I where I let off was on the midpoint. Wow, plenty of room. sound of the 2.5 liter flat six the early motor it sounds a lot better because it only has two catalytic converters not four but i'm a porsche boxer nerd i can go on and on about that there's the wash rack let's get cleaning <laughs> clean wing of course after sitting out in the sun for eight years paints a little faded so it's gonna need a polish to be perfect but this is like 90% better this is night and day difference a few touch-ups a few touch-ups needed just from it being around the airport for eight years people bumping into it I'm sure Looks like we got somebody catching a ride. You guys can see that. Black Widow. I saw the hourglass distinctly. So what do we do? Do we kill it? Are they endangered? No, spray them. Knock them down. Oh crap, where'd he go? Don't go in the plane. No. No, I don't want to find you later. Heck did he go? And just like that, she is clean. Definitely better, like we said about the wings. Needs a polish, needs a expert detailer in here to really bring the paint back to life. After eight years of sitting, there's a lot of grime that's just kind of caked in there. Also right here is where the canopy cover was, but in the wind it would go, you know, slapping around. So it scratched up the paint a little bit. So we got to polish that out. But this, uh, this little leopard print design, this will come out with like a wire brush. I just didn't have that. I'll clean this when it gets back to our hangar. You know me, I love cleaning engine bays, but it is much better. Look, we can actually see the orange and the white oil filter now. It's not covered in an inch of dust. So looking good. We're going to swap in the lithium ion battery, get some power to it, get some gas in it, and then go for a first start. All right guys, before we go for that first startup, I figure it couldn't hurt to have just a little bit of Marble Mist Oil down in the cylinders and turn the prop over by hand. Get those cylinders moving a little bit. They basically haven't moved in eight years. Boom, boom, boom. Spark plugs actually look really good. And you said these are auto plugs, yeah, car, those are car plugs. Yeah, those are NGK plugs. And then plugs. aviation below. Aviation below. Interesting how they do that. They yeah. actually look quite nice, so that's good. Yeah. And when we bore scoped this yesterday, we were able to get a good look at the aviation plugs and the bore scope, and all of them look perfect. Here we go, a little like half cap full. What do you guys think? Comment down below. Is it gonna start? Place your bets. For being a low compression motor, this still feels like a good amount of force to turn the prop, so 
I think that's a good thing. I hope our compression numbers are pretty high. Of course, I hope for the mid 70s. I don't know the likelihood of that, but as long as they're in the 60s or above, I think I'll be happy. So we're just working that, those pistons up and down and around. Yeah, feels really good. All right, getting a gallon of fuel. Ah, I just sprayed it in my eyes. Okay, now for the fun part, let's get power to the plane and see if it'll fire up for the first time. So huge shout out to EarthX for sending out this new lithium ion battery. This thing, look at me. I'm tossing it like it's a cardboard box. It weighs under five pounds, whereas the old RC is 15 pounds. So we're saving over 10 pounds. The cold cranking amps about double with the lithium ion. It lasts longer, it has a fail safe so that when it gets below 50%, it turns the power off so you don't fully kill the battery. What I've read online, the prop turns way quicker on a startup and it really performs well under demanding conditions and it lasts a lot longer. I can go on and on and on about the benefits, but the big one in my book is the 10 pounds. I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're talking a plane that only weighs 700 and something pounds empty, 10 pounds is actually a pretty good chunk of weight. So for the small premium that the lithium ion carries over the standard battery. It is well worth it. I'm telling you right now. Check them out in the link down below. I can't wait to get using this. Without further ado, let's throw this thing in. Final piece of the puzzle. Oh my gosh, I got the fuel. Add a little Marvel Misrael to the fuel. We're gonna set that just right here. Not the, not the cleanest setup, but uh, hey, it'll work. We're not taking off. Don't worry, people. This is just a test start. Grinning with joy, but also a little scared. Eight years is a long time to be sitting. Yeah, but at the same time, planes and LSAs in particular are pretty simple. O200 should be pretty bulletproof. So we've gone through it and I think it's ready for a startup. All right, he's feeling confident. I'm I'm gonna say it'll start up too, but uh, how, many you, how many turns? Are you kidding me? This thing's gonna be spinning forever until it fires. Think so? As long as it fires, I'm happy. I was kind of thinking the same thing. Uh, Jimmy's World, they make bets on how many turns it's gonna take. Jimmy has brought back way worse than this. Yeah, Jimmy, you inspired this video. Here we are in the weeds, finding old airplanes that have been sitting forever and resurrecting. I think it's gonna just go, honestly. All right, we got an optimist in the group. I'm gonna go with 15 I'm blades. This, I'm gonna say this, if the magnetos are still in time, because that's one thing we weren't able to check. Oh, so right. If the magnetos are in time, it's gonna fire within two cranks. What if they're out of time? Are we gonna do damage? Uh, no, we won't do any damage, it just won't fire. Okay, well. we'll get a, it'll backfire, it'll pop back, and we'll know pretty rapidly. If it's in time, two I'm cranks. two cranks. 10 cranks. 15 cranks. 15. Wow, we're all really optimistic, the fact that nobody's even betting on it not starting. Oh, and by the way, we are not changing the oil yet. My logic is it's probably got a ton of crud up in the cylinders, and eventually that stuff's gonna work its way into the oil, so why put brand new fresh stuff in it just to drain it? Why not just run it with the old stuff that's in it that, by the way, looks extremely clean. I'm sure it was just changed, very few hours on it. That's our logic, right? So we're gonna run it with this, drain it, of course, put in new stuff, new filter before a first flight. Boom, that lit up quick. It likes that new battery. Oh, yeah. EarthX for the win. Now what I wanna hear, I wanna hear the fuel pump change. Oh baby, come on, yeah guys, there's no telling if the fuel pumps worked or if any of the lines leading to the fuel pumps are clogged. Fingers crossed, this fuel gets to the motor. Good luck, fuel pressure still showing me zero. Uh -huh. Primer? Uh-oh. Let's go for it, you ready? Okay. All right, clear prop. Or should I do the better? Can I get a clear prop? Dang, that spun quick. That was five. Yeah, you can't even count them. They spin so yeah, quick. Yeah, they're, they're going fast. Battery's crazy. But what I'm seeing here is we're not getting any fuel pressure. Uh, all right, ready? Why does the primer not work? Oh, it's one, two, three, four. But you don't hear it. I'm not hearing anything. Clear prop. Five minutes later. That's fuel. There oh, 1.5. Oh my gosh, we got pressure now. Okay, you ready? Oh gosh. Okay, on the brakes. Okay. Oh my gosh! Yes! Wow, once we had the fuel pressure, it fired right up. You're right. 
Wow, that sounds good. Oil pressure's looking good. Oil temperature's looking good. 46 on the oil pressure. Tack 770. Fuel pressure. Eight years of sitting after a little bit of wrenching and a new battery. She is good to go. Bought this thing as a non-running, basically for the price of parts, and now it's slowly coming back to life. Oh man, that sounds healthy. Golly, look at it, cleaned up. Summer traffic, uh, Zodiac 106 Whiskey Lima Taxi from the South Hangers over to the uh, T-Shades, Summer traffic. What a nice treat toward the end of the vlog for all of you guys who stayed. Look at that, even the brakes work. Those rusted up, nasty brakes. That's a little weird seeing it without wings moving. The Zodiac Whiskey Lima, back taxi runway 35 to the T Shades, summer done. All right, taxi smooth. Brakes a little bit. Go, Larry! Take off, Larry! Send it! <laughs> Look at him go, testing the brakes. And that's where we're going to be parking her, right there. Bam! There you go. Okay, careful, right. careful. Brakes look, feel great, actually. You got the whole gamut in one, in one project video. Right, that's... Seriously, unloading to start up in the same video? Right, buying it sight unseen in neglected disrepair condition to ending the video with a perfect startup, great idle, and smooth taxi. This is definitely gonna be the longest video we've posted thus far on the channel. So be sure to comment down below if you guys like the longer form content. Everybody has been requesting longer videos, so here you go. Hey, there's gonna be follow up to this though, cause we gotta get the wings back on and get it in annual and then start flying it. Oh my gosh, yeah guys, stay tuned for part two where we do all the upgrades to it. We go through, do the oil change, uh, clean up the brakes, put the wings back on, do the upgraded wiring for the wings. So much to do, but this is such a great start. But part two is going to be a banger, and then probably part three, if everything goes well, a first flight. Larry, a first flight? A first flight. You think it's going to happen? I do. Oh. It, I mean, idle's good. Really, it just needs a good, thorough annual, and then some cosmetic stuff, and yeah, this thing's good to go. Ultralight guys talk about cheap ways to get into flying. Man, 16 grand. What a past 36 hours that has been. This is one of the crazier videos we've posted on the channel. What a way to end it with a running and moving <laughs> aircraft. Seriously, that is pretty amazing. More than 36 hours for me, by the way. And you might be typing in the comment section now, oh, well, it fired up. Like, why didn't you just leave it? Why are you moving the wings to transport it? Okay, we want to do a lot of upgrades to that plane that Larry, you heard him talk about a few. The one shop that was there on the field, I'm sure would be capable of doing an annual on that plane, but they don't particularly specialize in those LSAs. We were already past the last pickup day and they were about to start charging us and the shop wasn't able to get it in right away. So we're like, ah, oh, to heck with that. Just take off the wings and let's drive it over to Yuma where we have mechanics that specialize in that exact plane and we can go through it on our own pace and be able to vlog the whole thing and not miss out on any content. That's crazy though. Didn't the airport, you said, had it sitting there abandoned for like a decade? Yeah, nearly eight years. Yet we only had seven days eight to days. come pick it up before they would start charging us 200 bucks a day. Jeez. So we had to do something quick and this was, I think, the best option. So it all works out. Much better content for you guys. and I know that's what you all care about. So I hope you guys liked it. Comment down below. What do you think of the new plane? Are we crazy? Like even at this point with a running and driving, running and driving, running and moving plane, are we crazy or would you have done the same thing as us? Comment down below. I think it was a really great learning experience overall about taking wings off of planes. Like, geez, the whole wing spar bolts, like I didn't know those things were so puny. That's what's keeping you in the sky. Yeah, six Just on each little, side. like six millimeter bolt. 12, 12 in total or Gosh. 14, something like that. Also, now we know how big of a plane we can fit on our trailer. Huh. I think an LSA is about it. Oh, that was, that was something. We had to get creative with that one. I'll tell you that. Bungee cording the wheels together so that they still fit on the deck and we get the height that we need to slide the two wings underneath. That was, that was crazy. So we'll see you guys down in the comment section. Let's get some good conversation going down there. Would you ever buy a plane missing all logbooks sitting for eight years or would that be way too risky for you? I want to know down below.
Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for an awesome part two coming up in about a week. We'll be back down here with all the new parts that we're gonna install and then hopefully be ready for a first flight. See you guys in the next one. Saying that it feels right.